Howdy, let's go! It's time to check out the ultimate cinematic flops from that shambling juggernaut of children's television, Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon movies tend to range from passable distractions to outright dreadful devastations. In fact, Nick has been making a continual line of notoriously stupid mistakes in filmmaking for 20 years now. So, to celebrate this momentous occasion, let's check out the top six worst Nickelodeon movies. And just as always, if you do like these films, that's great. For most of these, I'm the completely wrong demographic. So take this list with a pinch of salt. Anyway, let's do this countdown. Number six, Fairly Odd Movie. Which is quite an understatement, because this movie is more than fairly odd. It's outright bizarre. Oh boy. The cheese levels are off the chart. This has so much cheesy, sugary, saccharine tween that it's likely to cause liver failure before the 20 minute mark. But I'm actually kind of mixed on this one because it's one of those situations where I really like the main actor and actress. I mean, it's Drake from Drake and Josh. And Daniela plays the role of ex-stalker slash environmentalist Tootie surprisingly sweetly. Maybe you wanted to go down to the waterfront, watch the sailboats, grab a smoothie? <laughs> uh... Yeah, yeah, that sounds really neat. But the role and story itself feel so humiliating for them. Basically, it's Timmy Turner's 23rd birthday. guys! And for years, he has continually refused to even try to get a job or move out of home. In fact, he's been in the fifth grade for 13 years. I've been in this class for 13 years. To top it off, Wanda and Cosmo look like hideous CG flesh monstrosities that will offend your eyes and ears the second they lumber on the screen. I've been told my voice is kind of irritating. Of course, I don't believe it. This one is on the start of the list, though, because, well, as simple as it is, I really like the romance between Timmy and Tootie. Never I actually just like watching them go on dates together. This is just my kind of schmaltz. I'd much prefer to just be watching these two hang out and get to know each other for the whole movie. But no, Wanda and Cosmo have to continually interrupt the pleasant atmosphere with their most obnoxious jokes ever. I hate change! That's why I only change my underwear every 3,000 years! But, uh, again, I actually ended up watching the two sequels because of Drake and Daniela. And as the sequels continued, I liked how the movies just embraced their own low-budget campiness. But overall, Fairly Odd Movie is completely alien to its original source material. And for number five... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2014. What could be worse than a Michael Bay movie? Some would say nothing, but it turns out when we combine Michael Bay's air-headed vapid explosion white noise garbage with the incompetence of Nickelodeon movies, we get, well, this. Hey bro, come with me. I got a safe place for you to hide, and if you get thirsty, I got a secret stash of orange crush behind the fridge. The turtles themselves look more like grotesque green CGI pig swirls. Shredder has been turned into a discount transformer, and every piece of dialogue is more cliche than the last. Oh, she's so hot I can feel my shell tightening. And even if you can somehow tolerate these Bay-esque turtle imposters, you might as well call it April the movie, because the movie's all about April. Though then again, Megan Fox was chosen purely as eye candy and looks and acts absolutely nothing like April. So I guess it's more Lady in Yellow Jacket the movie and the turtles will continually shove their face into the camera continually. As though the computer team was actually proud of what they'd done with their $125 million budget. The story is basically, the villains release a toxin so they can get rich selling the cure, April meets the turtles and they have to stop the bad guys. On the plus side, the turtles have the occasional line you might chuckle at. But then, the bay flashing of doom starts. This means that all attempts to build story or character are destroyed in the name of bay desperately attempting to give the audience a seizure so they might forget how abysmal he wasted 125 million US dollars. What more can really be said other than it's a Michael Bay film? 
The villains are boring, the dialogue is forced, the action scenes are your standard bay, explosion-y, white noise snore. The whole thing reminds me of the Smurfs movie shot in the dark under an ugly green light filter. It's not bad enough to be interesting and not good enough to be recommendable. It's just another depressingly successful example of Bay taking another dump on countless people's childhood memories. And the fourth worst Nickelodeon movie is Barnyard. Well, why don't we start with the obvious? It's ugly on the eyes, its characters are juvenile, it's basically cheap, vapid fluff pieced together with no substance. The story is that cows on this farm have learned to walk and talk. The main character, Ben, is trying to teach his son Otis to lead the farm, but Otis doesn't want to and- I could go on, but I've already phased out just reading that plot synopsis, and I suspect you probably have too. While we could question how, an entire barnyard magically developed frontal lobes in their cranium capable of speech planning and higher order thinking, I think the more pressing question is how any designers gazing upon this smeary puke avalanche of a film couldn't be revolted by the abominable abominable visuals they had created. Chicken Little looks far superior to this film, and I consider it among Disney's ugliest CG. Even if your studio isn't Pixar or DreamWorks, surely the art of computer graphic animation does not have to look this hideous. Chicken Little is the bombastic, really fantastic. From the jokes to the action scenes, everything leaves such an infinitesimally tiny impact that you'd swear you'd just blacked out for 90 minutes. Did I mention the CG looks like the open remains of an orgy trash bag? Because this thing really does look bad. The plus to the film is the voice talents dole out the script pretty well. But it's another case where I just feel bad for the actors wasting their talent on it. Barnyard is basically a Pixar parasite, designed by Nick to siphon some of the excess cash from the unknowing innocent family looking for a decent Pixar movie. And the third worst Nickelodeon movie is... Genie in a Bikini by... Awesomeness TV. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. How is telling the viewer that Awesomeness TV made this a promotion? It's more like a public service announcement. Be advised, Awesomeness TV made this movie. We apologize for the 45 minutes you are about to lose in advance. But anyway, the lunkheads who brought us Awesomeness TV now bring us I can't believe it's not Disney Channel. While both Nickelodeon and Disney Channel have their own unique tween sitcom styles, occasionally Nick will try to copy the Disney Channel tween style. In this case though, we get the worst of both worlds. On exactly the five minute mark, a genie does, in fact, appear in a bikini. Sup, dude masters? Unfortunately, this is a man in a bikini. Name's Matt, and I am a genie. Matt does the standard hammy tween sitcom actor performance, but it's not helped by the fact that we first meet him in a bikini. Unlike Fairly Odd Movie, these child actors are not giving it their all. Hold on, genies aren't real, they're just a myth. <laughs> is this happening right now? Is what's happening seriously happening right now? The standard bland story plays out. The kids have fun as the genie grants wishes with slight twists they learn more about the genie's troubled past. Blah, 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 blah. There's no overall message or overall structure to the story. Kids run around, adults act over the top and stupid. It's one of the most uninspired teen sitcom movies I've ever seen. Despite being called Genie in a Bikini. I mean, with that title, you could have just given me this picture for 90 minutes, and it still would have been better. At least these ladies aren't trying to act. Instead, they gave us this talking banana. Boy, I'm sure not to come to your party. Genie in a Bikini is just one big, underwhelming, lousy gimmick movie that disappointed on every front. And the second worst Nickelodeon movie is The Last Airbender. No worse Nickelodeon movie list is complete without The Last Airbender. I've talked about this one before though, so I'll keep it brief. Leave him alone. It's hard to put a finger specifically on what doesn't work about The Last Airbender the most. Is it the lackluster performances? Shyamalan's complete lack of understanding of the original material? The confusing and tedious narrative? 
Most likely, it's a combination of all of them. Basically, after getting the green light from Nickelodeon, our buddy Shyamalan decided to remake Avatar, giving us some agonizingly poor acting performances and a bunch of flashy effects with a dull, laborious story and zero investment. One of the most fascinating things to find about this Shyamalan flop is the completely deadpan delivery of almost every actor. I just want to accept my role as the Avatar. Somehow, Shyamalan has this talent where he can actually coach decent actors to give less authentic deliveries for his films. It's like all the actors are just as bewildered about the completely incoherent narrative as the audience is. To get your hairbending tattoos, you have to meditate for long periods of time. The actors tend to just walk around repeating lines and looking puzzled. The best part I found about this movie was it looked kinda pretty at times. And honestly, I normally really like how earnest Shyamalan's films are. Unlike Bay's films, which are so soullessly bad that they're bad, Shyamalan's films are generally so bad that they're good because they're an honest expression of himself and not just cheap, profit-driven, mindless Hollywood fluff. But this is the exception. Nothing feels original or earnest here. It feels like Shyamalan's turned a beautiful, original, compelling cartoon into a hackneyed, fantasy-esque nothing movie with no emotional energy whatsoever. And before we get to number one, I'd like to give the usual quick dishonorable mentions. Rugrats go wild. I really loathe this sequel. And while this sugary, gross, unpalatable pile more than deserves to be on the list, I've already talked about it once in worse sequels. And once is more than enough for this film. Good Burger. Actually, I thought Good Burger was okay growing up. Even if the jokes stunk, the acting was honestly okay, and I thought the two main characters were charming and likable. Back in the day, I actually found this a pretty good 90s Nick movie. Snow Day, sometimes a disappointing childhood experience at cinema will haunt you for many years. Mine is of Snow Day, even at seven before my teen years. This still felt like predictable teen junk to me. And with those said, here we go. And without a doubt, the number one worst Nickelodeon movie is... Today, every day, I do hope it's not cliche. Fred the Movie 3. Camp Fred. Oh no, no, no. It just never stops. I know I give Lucas a hard time a lot, but why would you give Fred three freaking movies, each one receiving more negative feedback than the last? Now you may be wondering, how do you make the original Fred even worse? Well, quite simply, you get Fred to do what I can only describe as squinging. Squeal singing, because nothing sounds more pleasant on the ears than an overhyped, wildly jump-cutting, squealing banshee maniac. There was a time, long ago, when I associated the name Fred with Flintstone. Ah, those were good days. Now, unfortunately, Fred is something I associate with the worst of high-pitched internet vapidness. Right up there with Annoying Orange. Interestingly, all reviewers seem to end up saying the same thing when we describe listening to Fred in his movie. This is horrible! <sighs> okay. So, Fred is signed up for camp I Wanna Pee Pee, and I feel dirty just saying that title. So at camp I Wanna Pee Pee, the camp director is secretly a giant rat monster who feasts upon the campers. Okay, where do we start? First off, what kind of business is able to continue with a name like Camp I Wanna Pee Pee? What parent would send their child to a place called that? Secondly, how does your camp continue to operate when your business owner is eating the customers? This does not seem like a viable, lucrative, long-term business model. Thirdly, just why does this movie exist at all? Well, believe it or not, the Fred movie sequel, Night of the Living Fred, drew 5.7 million unsuspecting viewers, who watched on in horror and dismay at the nightmare unfurling upon their screen. I would say I'm too hard on Lucas, but well, I'm not. Even today, he represents a side of YouTube I personally despise. And I know, some people are into smut like this on YouTube, but I really do think kids deserve so much better than this.
even more than the original. Fred 3 is torture. Isn't it horrible? What else can be said after two movies just like it? It's concentrated, vapid, obnoxious, nothing incarnate in movie form. I consider Fred 3, Camp Fred, the absolute worst Nickelodeon movie of all time. Isn't it horrible? Some people would probably agree that Nickelodeon isn't the best at making movies. But honestly, at least they've always given it a shot. After 20 years, they are still trying to make decent movies. Most of these movies were attempting to be creative, and often just show directors and actors with inexperience in the film industry. But you have to fail in order to learn, and mistakes are the first step towards mastering your art. I think movies like Spongebob Sponge Out of Water are okay. They don't come around often, but they show that Nickelodeon can make okay movies when they try. Movies that better represent some of their amazing cartoons. And with the new Hey Arnold, Rocco's Modern Life, and Invader Zim movie coming out, I honestly think Nickelodeon is going to start giving us some better quality movies in the upcoming years. Do you think I missed a particularly bad Nickelodeon movie? If you think so, feel free to mention it in the comments. And a very big thanks to my awesome patrons on Patreon. You guys really help make it possible for me to keep making these videos. And it really means so much to me. If you'd like to help support the channel, get videos a little earlier, or just be kept up to date with my vlogs. My Patreon's below at patreon.com slash phantomstrider. I really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.